Hello, welcome to Waypoint Survival. Today, I wanna to talk to you about some practical rain gear for the outdoorsman. Stay tuned. So I'm out here on the property and I'm working on our bark shelter for our phase four primitive survival and bushcraft class. And we've got major rain coming in as well as the remnants of Hurricane Ida when it gets to this area. And so we're looking at the next two or three days of rain. Well, I've got to get this finished. And so part of the time I'm going to be just getting wet, but other times I'm going to be uh, trying to stay dry, of course. And so when you're out and about in the back country, there's always a lot of questions. What kind of rain gear should you use? And I know there's a lot of opinions, but I want to share with you what I like to carry in my pack. It's fairly small and it doesn't take up a lot of room. It isn't super lightweight, but it's very practical and I'll show you why. I'm getting to my backpack and I'll show you that right now. As you can see from my location, there are some very dark and ugly clouds coming in over the horizon, heading in from the west. And so I have to be ready for it when it gets here. Even though I'm out working on the property, it's always good to be prepared should a sudden storm come in. All right, so down here in the pack, amongst my other tools and such, uh, of course, carry a heavy duty plastic bag and that's to put my gear in, uh, dry sticks or anything like that. Everybody knows about that, so that's not a big secret. But right here is my rain gear. And what this is, this is actually a rubberized German military poncho. Uh, I've also got a couple of the older US GI rubberized ponchos. These were used, I guess, in the 80s and 90s. Most of what you get today are the nylon, uh, the PU coated. They're very lightweight, but they're also not very durable. This is amazing. This stuff is really tough. But what I carry inside is also very useful because this is more than just a poncho. Opening this up, and this is glow-in-the-dark white paracord. Uh, I used to put green on here and I can't tell you how many times I've lost it and had to try to locate it in the grass. So orange is great. I like this because actually it glows in the dark and so it makes it a little easier to find if it's low light or you can charge it up if you do happen to leave it laying outside uh, and it gets low light conditions. Again, you can easily find that. All right, so inside, very quickly, I have a couple of items. First of all, I have this great Gore-Tex. It's made by Outdoor Research. This great hat. It's a little dirty because, again, I use it uh, quite a bit. But uh, this is really nice because it has a longer brim in the back. And that's really great because it keeps the rain from going down your neck. I also have some heavy-duty Gore-Tex military pants. And the reason I like these, you can buy lightweight stuff and all that. I know these are kind of pricey, but if you look around, you can find them on sale. But what's nice about it is the legs open up really wide. So it's designed to be put on with your boots. You can just pull it on right over top of your clothes. Now, why do you need rain pants? Well, because this is a poncho. And when you wear a poncho, depending on how tall you are, and the taller you are, the more of a problem it is. But the rain drips off the bottom of the poncho. So even if you're wearing waterproof boots and you, you feel like you can walk through mud puddles, even eight inch boots and you're, you're fine. But I will tell you this, the water will drip off the bottom of your poncho, make your pants legs wet, and it'll run right down into your boots, your socks, get your feet wet. So you definitely need some kind of rain pants. It doesn't have to be the military Gore-Tex. I just happen to have this, I like it. I like the way it fits and it's designed to go over top of your uniform. It's also very tough, made for our military, so it's very durable. All right, so let's go ahead and put this outfit on so you can see what it looks like. So the first thing that I'm gonna put on is the pants. Now you wanna leave these in a readily deployable condition. So they're already unzipped. I don't wanna take time if it comes down a sudden rain to have to stop, not only untie and unroll my rain gear package, but then also at the same time have to fiddle with zippers and Velcro and all that. So it needs to be ready to go. Uh, your drawstrings need to be open. Everything needs to be basically ready for you to just open up and go. Now I did have that zipped up, but uh, generally I like to keep it open. That's just really smart. All right, let's go ahead and put it on. All 
I like these because they're big and they go over top of my knife, my cell phone pouch if I'm carrying one, and very easy to fasten and put together. So again, very, very quick and attach that Velcro around the outside edge, just like this. All right, and now we have our rain pants on. Next, we come to the poncho. Now, it's important with this poncho that again, you leave everything open. Now, these are designed for uh, each man to carry one and you can snap them together and it makes a tent. There are also grommets on the outside edge and you can take and you can stake this out. This makes a very, very handy shelter. And I have slept under this in snowy conditions. People that are in the military are very aware of it. This is the German one. And uh, you can still find these uh, sometimes on Amazon or eBay. They're getting more expensive. Uh, sometimes at some of the shows you'll find these. But you want to make sure that the snaps and everything are open on the sides. Again, for a quick deployment. So we put this on. I'm going to have to find where the hole have to find where the hole is that's the only fiddly part of it but then once you get that on you have a pretty big shelter and uh, you can see how how large this is on me however I want you to notice how the rain will drip off the bottom as you can see when the poncho is down just below my knees a lot of water would run down onto my pants that's why the Gore-Tex pants or waterproof nylon pants are so very, very important. That's a really big deal. Now there's one more thing I want to show you. So this poncho has a really great rubberized hood. And if you've got a ball cap on like this, then it works pretty decently, just like so, to keep the rain off of your head and face. But if you've ever worn any of these, you'll know that when it's hot and humid outside, you begin to sweat a lot. So that's why you want to leave the sides open. You want as much airflow as possible. But the problem with this is it, it definitely hinders your hearing and it minimizes your, your sight from side to side. So your peripheral vision. So that's why I like to use the OR hat. So when I wear the OR hat, I usually, when it's raining, I will keep these Velcroed sides down. This gives me great peripheral vision. It also protects uh, around the outside of my head so I don't get rained on but there's a problem with this if you leave this open and out it acts like a rain scoop so what you want to do is you want to simply take and roll the hood back inside like that and then if you've done it right this extra long flap this cap part here on the back of my hat because it's longer in the back than it is in the front it keeps the rain from running down your back. So a few things before I end this video. Um, of course, you can find this poncho, as I said before, military outlets, uh, eBay, Amazon, places like that. Uh, so you can find those online. Uh, they used to be 20 to $30. Now they're about double that, but they're well worth the money because they're gonna last you for many years. And of course, they're easily patchable because they're rubberized. Uh, you can patch them with like a bicycle inner tube, uh, rubber repair kit, or you could just put some duct tape on it. That works as well. Uh, the other thing is the Outdoor Research hat. You can find that again, Outdoor Research or from uh, Amazon, eBay, and places like that. The pants, the same deal. I do want to emphasize that you need to wear waterproof boots or at least hiking shoes with a little taller. Uh, I, I like six inch hikers myself. Uh, the reason you want to do that is because all of this water is going to run down and wet feet are very uncomfortable and it's no fun to be out in the backcountry with wet feet. So I always wear waterproof shoes no matter what I'm doing. Sometimes just walking through uh, tall grass in the morning or after a rain, it, the sky could be clear and the sun could be shining, but the, the ground and the grass is soaking wet. So I don't like wet feet. And of course, in a survival situation, uh, that's very uncomfortable and uh, at night could be potentially dangerous. So this is what I wear. And this is what I carry in my pack. I find it immensely practical. Um, I don't care about the weight. I know I'm probably going to get some comments. People are like, oh, that's too heavy. I carry something this big around and, you know, weighs three ounces. And, and that's fine if that works for you. But I know in my environment, a lot of briars, a lot of brush, a lot of places that I'm traveling. And I need something that's heavy and durable. And if worst case scenario happens and I have to be out for an extended period of time, I know this isn't going to let me down. It's going to stick with me. It's going to work. 
and I'm going to have it for a long time. Again, I've had some of these for like 20 years, and uh, they're, some of them are from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and they're still usable and durable. So I encourage you to check it out, and I think you will really like this as an outdoor option. One other thing I want to tell you about wearing something like this is these do not breathe well. So I would recommend that if you're out in a rainstorm uh, or something like that, that you just hunker down unless you just absolutely have to go somewhere because you're going to really sweat, you're going to perspire, uh, and you're going to get as wet on the inside from perspiration as you will from the rain on the outside. So other than keeping your gear mostly dry, uh, that humidity from your body is going to really, really make it miserable. So I would caution to be very, very careful. And of course with that, it's always a good idea to wear quick drying clothes, uh, nylon and polyester and things like that, uh, that breathe easy and that dry quick underneath your clothes. Because um, again, it's good to be dry and uh, it's easier to uh, stay warm and dry than it is to get warm and dry. So if a rain comes, put your gear on, put it over top of your backpack and just hunker down and wait till the storm blows over. This is James Bender for Waypoint Survival. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also make sure and check out the links in the description box below. And while you're down there, you'll find our Patreon link. This is where you can donate to financially support the channel. And you can do so for as little as a dollar a month. And a big thank you to everybody that's been doing so. You'll also find our spring link. This is where you can buy great Waypoint Survival branded merchandise. You'll also find our waypointsurvival.com link. And this is where you can sign up for great survival and bushcraft training classes. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. And when you do subscribe, make sure and press that bell button so that you can stay notified of all of our upcoming videos. And we'll talk to you next time.